Alrighty, so in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Endeavor OS ARM for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's dive straight into the video. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a service that will allow you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC, 3D printing, and much more. Let's say you were building a custom project and you needed a specific PCB for it to work correctly. All you need to do is go to PCBWay.com, become a member, get $5 for free, and order your first one to two layered standard PCB prototype with dimensions of within 100 to 100 millimeters and with a quantity of 10, and it would be completely free. PCBWay also has an open source community that you can join where you can find custom projects that PCBWay users have created, some even with the Raspberry Pi. Basically, if you need anything from PCB prototypes to SMD stencils and to to all of their other great services, PCBWay has it covered. So first of all, I do want to mention that this is not a new Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's just a finally became usable, at least in my experience. So in the past, I have tried Endeavor OS or I've tried installing it on my Raspberry Pi 4, but they always use the plain Arch kernel and my Raspberry Pi is an 8GB model, meaning that there's something different in it than the 4 gigabyte model. So even 64 bit Arch would not, well, it would work on my Pi 4, but none of my USB ports would be functioning, meaning that Endeavor OS, it was never a great experience either. But now they have finally switched over to the Raspberry Pi kernel, meaning things like USB ports work better and hopefully will be receiving a little bit better performance than beforehand. So I am excited and I'm also excited because this is finally another. Another Arch based Linux distro for the Raspberry Pi 4. I mean, before there was really only Manjaro that was really, really functional for the Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm excited to see that there are finally more and another Linux distribution that should run fairly well on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's dive straight into the desktop look and feel. So there are many different desktop environments you can choose. For this operating system, but I went ahead and I chose the XFCE desktop environment for this video. As you can see, I could type in NeoFetch right here, and I am currently running the XFCE desktop environment. But how does the desktop feel? Well, it feels pretty good. It definitely is themed a little bit. This is not stock XFCE, but it's not really, really themed. It's just kind of there. So we have this nice bar on the bottom. There's some nice transparency in the background of it. And even on our terminal right here, you can see we have some transparency. And when we try to move our terminal, we get this really beautiful transparency in the background. I'm a huge fan of transparency and I think it's cool. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down our Raspberry Pi too much either. And everything like that seems to be pretty good. And we are actually running the Quoger icons, which are pretty cool icons. You can see in the file manager, it looks like that. All of our applications look like this with the Quoger icons. And for the theme, we are using the Arc Darker theme, which is also an amazing theme. I love the Arc theme. It's really awesome. It's a classic for me on Linux. So that is awesome. Everything else is pretty normal standalone. I mean, we have our bottom bar at the bottom with our Wi-Fi, audio, battery, notifications, time, etc. We have our Windows style application launcher right here. And it all seems to be pretty good. So that is basically what the desktop looks like. About pre-installed applications, well, when it comes to pre-installed applications, we really don't have that much on this operating system. It does seem to be a pretty bare bones type of operating system. So in accessories, we have just the default accessories, stuff like a screenshot manager, like a zip opener, etc. stuff like that. Just, you know, your good old stuff that you are gonna want on your system. So that's cool that they include those things in graphics. We have the wrist Reto image viewer and internet. We don't even come with a browser, which is a little bit strange, but we can always install one ourselves as well. Multimedia, we have a media player and some test utilities. And settings, we have all of the default XFCE settings, really nothing too special here. All of these are just the default stuff that really come on XFCE. In system, we have some different stuff like a task manager, HTOP, which I actually installed myself, and our file manager and terminal, stuff like that. So you as you can see, this operating system is definitely not bloated. It's not packed with tons of packages. 
if you're interested in the package count, we actually only have 478 packages right now, which I have installed a couple myself. But even with that, that is not that much. That is definitely a pretty bare bone system. Well, what about system resource usage? Well, so we actually come with their own little system resource manager user right here. Oh, that is not installed. So I guess they use something called glances and it does not seem to be installed. That's a little bit strange, but we could try installing theirs ourselves too. So if we tried sudo pacman s glances, let's see if that works. All right, so that should hopefully fix this error with this system resource user usage monitor right there. All right, so it's done installing right now. So we could try it one more time. Let's click it and oh, nope, that just crashed right there. So I don't know, that's not working, but that's okay. We can always type in glances in here and see if that works. I guess glances does not work actually. So I don't know what's going on with that, but we can always go to the good old trusty htop, which will show us as good of information. So right now we are running 530 megabytes of RAM. I would say it's not bad with having transparency in the background. And for most people, that's not gonna be too high to actually use on their Raspberry Pi 4, I'd say. And that's the middle ground. You're safe with using this operating system on your Pi 4 with the RAM usage. Even on a 2 gigabyte Pi, you're not going to be hurting too much. So I say it's pretty good. Everything else looks pretty good. I don't doesn't look like we have any swap partitions by default, which is cool. Everything else pretty awesome. So that is what HTOP is like. What about just day-to-day -day performance? Like, what would it be like if I'm just trying to switch between apps and do different stuff like that? Well, I do want to include a web browser test in that, and we don't actually have one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install sudo pacman-s Firefox. I'm going to install the Firefox web browser real fast because we really do need a web browser for this to work correctly. All right, so we got Firefox installed. So now let's try to open up kind of a few or kind of a lot of applications and see how our system handles it. Does it slow down or is there, does it stay usable? So we'll open up htop right here and just have that in the corner right here. We'll just open up a couple of file managers. We'll open up Firefox and we'll try to open up the media player. Like we are really loading the system up. And let's try to type something in like a Pi 4 in there. We'll have our media player right here. And then we could open up something else too. We could go to graphics, Rosetta Image Viewer. And I mean, the system is really snappy, honestly. This is a very snappy experience. I'm happy with how this all is playing out. Look at that. The applications are opening up incredibly fast. Honestly, this is amazing performance on a Raspberry Pi, even though I know this is XFC, it's not a super heavy desktop, but just to compare to some of the other stuff I have tried in the past, this is amazing, and with all these applications open right now, we are using 876 megabytes of RAM, which is not a ton of that RAM either. I know these are not really heavy applications. I'm not even looking at an image or I'm not watching a video, but just the overall system, it just feels really snappy, which is really great to see on the Raspberry Pi 4. So that's awesome. What about video playback and web browsing? Well, let's try to open up a few more tabs and see how the web browsing experience is. Okay, so here we have Pi 4. We could go to images. We could go to amazon.com in this window. And we could try to type in something like that right there. And here's this Amazon right here. So web browsing, I would say, is a little bit it's not as quick, but you know, this is a Raspberry Pi 4. It's not the craziest thing ever. It's not incredibly fast. No, it is not. Even this is still kind of loading, as you can see, like it's a little bit annoying or not annoying. That's the wrong word. It's a little bit sad that web browsing isn't super snappy. Like you might get on some select, select operating systems on the Raspberry Pi 4, but I wouldn't say this is bad in any way. Like I could search something like Odroid M1, which is another single board computer, and you know that loaded up pretty fast. I could go to images, and you know it takes a little bit, of, but of course, you also have to consider my internet connection may not be the best. But you know, the web browsing experience isn't the worst, nor is the best. It's, I would say it's just around, eh, it's normal. What about Big Bug Bunny? Well, let's try out Big Bug Bunny real fast. Oh, before we try out the Big Bug Bunny, let's see what graphics, what, what it says about graphics in here. So we'll go to about 
support and we'll look under the graphics tab to see and this is running under web render i just want to show this because some of you may be interested we are web rendering this over its software it's not hardware rendering so you, you do need to consider that that we are running this with web rendering so once we have that in mind we'll go ahead and we'll try to play a 720p big buck bunny video see how that actually goes we have a lot of thunar instances open i did not know that Close these out real fast while the video is loading up. Up that to 720p. We'll play the video. We'll go stats for nerds. Looking pretty good. Let's go skip to the middle right here. All right. So here we are playing. And right now, we are dropping 17 frames out of 247, which honestly, I'd say it's not too bad. For I have seen much worse, even with 720p videos. I know 720p isn't the standard, but. That is kind of the thing we have to live with with the Raspberry Pi 4, but it does not seem to be terrible. Like, it's not it's not super laggy, nor is it dropping a million frames. It seems to be doing its job all right. So I'd say web video playback on here is not terrible. I, I, w I could watch this video, and it wouldn't be terrible. Let me just put it that way. And most operating systems on the Raspberry Pi 4 aren't amazing, so I'd say this is either around other operating systems or it's a, even a little bit better than some. So that is it for the video playback. So this operating system is really amazing. I love a lot of stuff about it. I love the look of it. It's really nice. I love transparency. Even this wallpaper right here, a call to arms. I think it's kind of funny and I like their purple theme, their astronaut style theme. It's really awesome. This operating system is really cool. So if you're someone who's looking for an Arch based distro for the Raspberry Pi 4 and you want really close to stock Arch, this could be for you. Like even they, we don't have the custom Endeavor L OS logo and NeoFetch, we just have the classic Arch, and all the packages are going to be straight from Arch Linux. The only difference is you're going to have that Raspberry Pi kernel, which is going to make it perform or even be better or actually work on your Raspberry Pi 4, which is awesome. But I just have one complaint about this operating system, and that is the installation process. The installation process sadly requires you to be first on an Arch based distro on your main PC and then you have to put an installer on like an SD card or a USB stick, you plug that in your Raspberry Pi 4, then you have to run more installation scripts on top of that to actually choose your desktop environment and get it installed. It's just a really long experience and I know that maybe that is what they want and they just want to have freedom and that's that is i do understand that if that is a goal but personally i would rather have something like m all of the other linux distros do for the raspberry pi 4 like manjaro or ubuntu raspberry pi west they provide you with a ready image you can flash to an sd or a usb stick plug it straight into your raspberry pi 4 and you can boot it up straight into the desktop i really do wish endeavor os would do this maybe they'll consider it in the future i'm not sure but if they don't it still is okay you are learning quite a lot when installing this so if you want to learn about arch maybe this is one of the ways you could do it but i'm not going to be going through the installation process in this video since it is quite lengthy and i don't want to make this video any more longer but if you really do want an installation guide, let me know down below in the comments and I will consider making one and posting it on the channel. But if you have any questions about the Raspberry Pi 4, about this, or really anything, let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like to the video. And if you really enjoyed it, a sub to the channel would be spectacular. And thanks for watching.